Welcome to the Senate Minute, a weekly update to help Hoosiers keep informed about the Indiana General Assembly and engage in our legislative process. This is Cole Callahan and Jacob Lenfesti coming to you from the Senate Majority Communications Office. With the Indiana General Assembly in the final half of the legislative session, the Senate is now considering legislation originally passed by the House of Representatives and vice versa. Of the 449 bills authored in the Senate chamber, 172 have moved to the House, and of the 451 bills authored in the House, 130 have moved to the Senate. One issue lawmakers are looking to address is the backlog of untested rape kits in Indiana. To address this issue, State Senator Michael Kreider authored Senate Bill 264, which would require the Indiana Statewide Sexual Assault Response Team to submit a report to the Legislative Council by December 1, 2018. This report would detail the feasibility of creating a rape kit tracking and testing database, as well as sources of funding and the identity of the supervising agency that would create, operate, manage, and maintain the database. This week we had the opportunity to interview Senator Kreider to learn more about the bill. Thank you for coming with us today, Senator Kreider. Um, we're going to talk about Senate Bill 264. I know that's one of your more favorite bills uh, dealing with rape kits. Uh, my first question was, how and when was the issue regarding this bill presented to you? So I began working on the issue of sexual assault uh, in uh, 2015 when a young lady from my district approached me. She had been raped while a student at IUPUI. She was a student. The guy that raped her was a teaching assistant, so she didn't report at the time. Ironically, after about nine years, this guy goes into the police and confesses. So at the current time we had, the statute of limitations was five years, and it had run, and so while the law enforcement was willing to move forward with the prosecution. She was willing to participate in the prosecution. The prosecutor's office says you, there's nothing you can do. And so we passed a law that, that gave uh, three areas, uh, a dis discovery of DNA um, in a case upon a confession or upon a discovery of photographic or recorded devices. So if you find something like that, it doesn't matter how long between the incident and when that was discovered, you, the prosecutor gets a new five-year window of opportunity to prosecute. And so what happened was uh, law enforcement agencies started calling and said, hey, we made a case based on your law. Um, you know, somebody that had been raped 25 years ago, uh, this, this guy is a criminal and he broke into a garage and cut his hand and we got DNA and we matched it up. And so I started thinking about the importance of the kits, you know, those sexual assault kits that are collected. I started checking and, and trying to figure out how many of these kits might be out in the state that, that had been processed. I heard numbers from 15,000 to, you know, is the sky's the limit. And so I asked, I decided we've got to figure this out. So I asked the state police to do a statewide check of the kits and they found out there's about 5,200 of those kits around the state sitting in evidence lockers or whatever. And, you know, the thing that we know uh, from looking at what's happening in other states and, and another thing that kind of raises the importance is last year we passed the DNA collection on felony arrest and so what we know is that as those uh, samples start getting entered into the CODIS database, we'll see matches happen at a pretty high rate. How do we handle the kits that are currently setting out there? The thing that I'm hopeful going forward is for a victim, we'll have a process where when a sexual assault nurse examiner collects the kit at the hospital, they'll scan a barcode into a database and they can give that identifier to the victim and she can see where her kid is in the process. It's not moving. She needs to be asking questions to law enforcement. Why, what's happening with my kid? Why is it my case moving forward? I'm trying to take, because I come from a law enforcement background, I'm trying to take very logical steps to trying to get us to a, a better place in, in this situation. We need to do better. We need to get this right. The bill this year asked the Sexual Assault Coalition, which is a, a, a large group of folks that meet, prosecutors, law enforcement, uh, sexual assault nurse examiners, victims, advocates, the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute, a large group of people that are really the subject matter experts, to look for a system that makes sense, a tracking system that makes sense, and recommend that, but also recommend 
who should kind of uh, oversee that process. So is it the state police? Maybe not because they also are doing the lab piece. Is it the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute? Perhaps it's the State Department of Health because most of the kits are collected in a healthcare setting. I really don't have enough information at this point to say I would pick process A that cost $500,000 to recommend for a bill next session. And that's what I'll do is come back next session asking for funding for that okay. process. Because it's a budget year. It is a okay. budget year. Absolutely. Um, so what does the feedback from your constituents look like with your fight for the certain um, issue? Well, I think people appreciate the fact that somebody's really digging in and, and trying to get us to a better place. You know, these the, the victims, and I, I work a lot on um, sex trafficking and domestic violence and all these things that, that really are kind of in, interconnected. To the extent that we can make this process serve the victims better, I think that's kind of the ultimate goal. And I think my feedback from my constituents is they really like the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that's pretty persistent. You know, I've been up after this for several years. I'm trying to get funding for the Internet Crimes Against Children uh, investigation unit. I've done a lot of work around adult protective services, and I, I think people appreciate that. I'm a guy that, that tries to help people that, that are impacted uh, at some level with um, interaction with the justice system and, and to, to hopefully make sure that, you know, to the extent possible, we may not get convictions on every one of those cases, but to the extent possible, we have done everything that we possibly can to, to get a successful outcome and let that person have some justice in their case. Really, well, thank you so much, Senator Kreider. We appreciate you for your time and the passion that you uh, conveyed. Thank you. This bill passed in the House Committee on Veterans Affairs and Public Safety with a vote of 12 to 0. It will now be considered by the full House of Representatives. Remember, you can track the progress of this bill and others by going to www.iga.in.gov and using the search bar in the top right-hand corner. You can subscribe to the Senate Minute on your Apple Podcast app or listen at indianasenaterepublicans.com. Just click on the Media Room tab and then click on the Podcast button. Join us next week to learn more about the bills being heard in the Indiana General Assembly. For the Senate Majority Communications Office, this is Jacob Lenfesti and Cole Callahan. Have a great week.